high. GRC, or Governance, Risk, and Compliance, is one of the most underrated career pathways that you can go in cybersecurity. And in this video, I'm going to go over exactly what GRC is, daily duties, so what a day in a life looks like in GRC, skills you would need to gain as a foundation for GRC, common GRC careers and job titles, GRC education and certification requirements, and stay to the end of the video and I'll be going over step by step on how you can land a career in GRC. If you are new to my channel, this channel is all about helping you upskill and land a job in cybersecurity. I do have a free how to land a cybersecurity job course below, so go ahead and check that out. And while you're down there, go ahead and smash that like button and hit the subscribe. So let's just begin. What exactly is GRC or governance, risk and compliance? Well, security governance is basically the framework that supports the security goals of an organization being set and expressed by senior management and then communicated through all of the different levels of the organization. So if you have ever seen a policy or signed something, that's usually governance. Now, the next part is you have risk and risk within this arena of GRC and cybersecurity is the likelihood of a threat event occurrence and potential adverse impact should the event occur. And risk is very important. In order to assess and respond to risks, you have to know exactly what you have and um, take assessments, exactly what assets you have. The next component of GRC is compliance. And this involves meeting various controls that are enacted by industry or law, regulatory law, to protect the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of your business. What type of skills are you going to need to do GRC? Number one, knowing the basics of what IT is and information technology and operating systems and computers, and also knowing the core cybersecurity foundation skills, you're going to need to know knowledge of rules and regulations really in depth. Now, what ones you need to know in depth depend on your industry. So if you work in say healthcare, you're really going to need to know HIPAA and all of the rules and regulations that go around that and you're going to need to ensure all of the security controls and policies are in place to ensure you are in compliance with HIPAA laws or regulations. Otherwise it can cost you a lot of money. The next really good skill, or I guess knowing how to use it is the NIST documentation. And this is more of a guideline for private industry, but for public industry, this is a must. And essentially this has all of the answers that you need to answer any question you have. Honestly, you could probably just read NIST documentation and gain a really good like education. However, it's very, very dense. Some really good um, NIST documentations to learn is NIST 800-53. This is the one that often comes up on different job postings. These are essentially various types of security controls. The next one is NIST 800-37, and this is RMF. And RMF is huge, and you're going to need to know RMF if you're going to work within the GRC arena. It's not only used by public, but also private. And the seven stages to RMF is going to be categorizing, selecting, implementing, assessing, authorizing, monitoring, and preparing. And if you know those seven steps and everything that goes on in each one of those steps, you will be setting yourself up for success on landing a job in risk or compliance, governance also, but it takes more policy making in that arena, still important. Now, exactly what are some GRC roles and responsibilities along with what are the salaries that you can make in GRC and cybersecurity? Well, I broke it down into three main jobs. So for governance, the biggest job is the Chief Information Security Officer or CISO or CISO. This is a senior level executive C-suite that is responsible for the whole security program, policies and management at a company. 
Um, so they're going to be developing and implementing an information security policy, which includes procedures and policies designed to protect enterprise communication systems and assets. They often are thrown underneath the bus and are the sacrificial lamb when it comes to cybersecurity. So if you're a CISO and your company gets breached, you're probably going to get fired. <laughs> Just, but that goes into how much you can make. Now, according to Glassdoor, it's 250,000, but remember those are always kind of low. If we look at Cybercrime Magazine, the pay is around $400,000, and they say in the next five years, it might go up to around a million dollars a year. This actually made me consider becoming a CISO just for a couple of years. I was like, I could definitely do that job. It just might be brutal for two or three years. I was like, yeah, I don't know. For $400,000, I would consider it. However, you do spend a lot of your time in meetings and that's just the hardest like hurdle for me to get over is I don't want to go to meetings all of the time. It's why I like working like in the technical arena because I don't go to that many meetings. The next uh, GRC job falls under compliance is going to be a security auditor, and I have done this work, but essentially you're going to make sure computer systems are in regulation with different rules, laws, according to your industry. And oftentimes they're going to have a checklist and you're going to go through other people's infrastructure or whatever it is, and you're going to make sure they're following the guidelines that are implemented. For instance, if you work in the banking or payment processing, you're going to have to follow PCI DSSS, and they have to have all of their network traffic encrypted. And so you may be going to their company and making sure that their traffic is encrypted and things of that sort. The next one that I have is a GRC analyst. And so sometimes you'll lump multiple jobs into one, but essentially you could be doing auditing work. So walkthroughs and tests and making sure of the effectiveness of controls. And also you'll be doing risk. So risk, you might be performing information security risk assessments on third party vendors. You may be responding to vendor risk assessments. You may in be interpreting, analyzing third party security risk assessment results. Uh, you may be documenting risks, issues, and mitigation plans, and all of that really interesting and fun stuff. Next topic is GRC education and certificate requirements. Do you need a degree to do GRC? And the answer is no. But if you're going to work for government agencies, they really like to see degrees. Also, if you want to work at a large banking industry or bureaucratic, company, they also really like to see degrees. If we're gonna go work for like a smaller company, oftentimes you really don't need a degree to work in GRC. It's not like accounting where you definitely need a degree. It, there's really not like a, most of my coworkers as I work in cybersecurity don't have degrees. Certificates are really big in the cybersecurity industry and also no surprise, the GRC industry, because oftentimes cybersecurity certificates are for compliance reasons. Um, and some really good cybersecurity certificates are by ISACA. I think they really have a monopoly over the GRC field when it comes to certificates, but you have um, an entry level, the ITCA. It's not exactly um, well known, but it will prepare you more for like the CRISC, the CISM and the CISA, CISA type of cybersecurity certifications. Honestly, these certificates will open up so many doors for you. And it also structures your learning to where you don't have to pay $20,000 for a cybersecurity bootcamp, but just maybe take the test one or two times. You may fail the first time, it's all right. Take it again and study more. Again, ISACA, really good resource for GRC credentials. As for GRC courses and tools, I can't, really tell you without knowing the industry you're going into. I know Gerald Auger does have a GRC masterclass, which is, I've been through it, is really good. But beyond that, it's really hard to find resources in GRC, maybe because it's not like ethical hacking and it doesn't kind of have like that cool factor and maybe deemed boring. It, it can be boring, but I could honestly say pen testing and ethical hacking can also be extremely boring writing all of your reports. So not a lot of courses. However, I will leave those links below and if I find any, I will go ahead and 
put them below. And now, as what you have been waiting for, sure. How do you get into GRC with no experience? Well, let me tell you. The first step, you're going to need to know the IT basic. If you don't know the IT basics, honestly, it can be extremely difficult to even know what GRC is or what a security control is or any of that. So you need to learn about operating systems and networking. After that, I would learn the basics of cybersecurity. And that is just because you need that core knowledge of exactly what cybersecurity is because it's an abstraction of hundreds of thousands of jobs. So knowing the basics of say confidentiality, integrity, availability, non-repudiation would be so beneficial for you. So learn that. The third step is niche down. And if you're watching this, you probably have chosen GRC. So you're going to want to dive deep into GRC and also know what industry you're going into because the rules and laws and regulations do change depending on the industry. So if you are say working as a nurse and you want to do GRC, I would learn HIPAA and all of the rules and regulations within the healthcare field because that you already have like a good basis of like what exactly goes on in healthcare. You just need to add a few extra skills and it may not seem like much, but I don't know anything about healthcare and I work in cybersecurity. So just the fact that you work in healthcare already gives you a leg up in changing your career. I would just stay in the same industry if you already have a job, but literally in every industry, they're going to have GRC positions. So if you're in real estate or insurance or banking, stay in the industry and then learn these extra GRC skills. Also make sure that you know what job you want. Not all of them are entry level. For instance, if you're just trying to change your career, going for the CISO position may not be the best idea as that is a C executive um, spot. Uh, and there's not that many of them. So the competition for those types of jobs is probably pretty fierce. So look at like entry level to like mid-level type of careers to figure out the job and then reverse engineer what skills you need for that job. It's going to be different for each one. The next one is you're really going to want to qualify yourself for that job. So when you do your resume, you're going to want to be a pretty close match to whatever the employer is looking for. Make sure your resume is top notch when you go to interview, make sure you did some interview prep and you really know everything that you put on your resume, don't lie, and then negotiate and then land that job. Again, I do have that free how to land a cybersecurity job course below. So go ahead and check that out. And it goes into more detail about changing your career into cybersecurity and more broader terms tech. So yeah, uh, check that out. and. If you liked this video, you may also like my video on cybersecurity certifications right here and how to advance your career strategically. Look at that and I will see you in the next video. Bye.